follow-up question, if I may, to Ambassador Kashitsky. Um, do you expect, in light of the current situation, that possibly the, in the near future, for example, 2021, uh, the allocation of the funds uh, from the uh, European uh, economic area, Norway, Switzerland, might change, might increase, or what's, uh, what's, what's your anticipation in that regard? Apart from what we have, what we have seen, which is rather plentiful. Yeah. We have uh, for the period uh, 2014, from 2014 to 2021, allocation 113 million uh, uh, euros for these EN and Norway grants. We have several programs. Um, already some programs are finished. Uh, some uh, programs will be open in uh, next uh, uh, period. We don't expect that uh, we will have a higher allocation than more than 113 million euros. We will see uh, if we will have some kind of reserves, reserves with uh, current programs and we can change uh, uh, some kind of allocation from one to other, other program. Uh, other situation is regarding Swiss financial mechanism. We finish uh, last, uh, uh, which means uh, first decade of this program. We are in the phase for second uh, uh, Swiss financial mechanism. We will have uh, allocation approximately 67 uh, million uh, Swiss uh, francs. And uh, now we are in the stage of um, discussion and uh, uh, preparation of this uh, new period. What I can say at this uh, time, um, the focus will be for you know, vocational education, uh, cooperation in, the, in this area and uh, in different order, but uh, uh, maybe first cause we can expect maybe at the end of the next year, which means in current situation it's uh, not at appropriate way to use this um, uh, financial mechanism. Other situation is in uh, 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 Euro uh, funds uh, because uh, uh, we are discussing about uh, uh, higher amount of uh, allocations and also of uh, free uh, money which we can use also uh, for projects regarding corona, corona crisis. Thank you very much, Ambassador Kashitsky. Thank you very much for your presentation and for uh, interesting additional information. Uh, yes, we all speak a lot about uh, EU funds. One should not uh, forget about the uh, European economic area, uh, including Norway and Switzerland, and the funds available for municipalities from these sources. Now I would like to give the floor to Assistant Professor Stefan Rehak from the Department of Public Administration and Regional Development at the University of Economics in Bratislava, who will present uh, his view on the impact of the current situation on the financing of the city. So, uh, Mr. Rehak, the floor is yours. My, my presentation will be about the policy responses during the crisis and after the crisis of, of cities mainly. So, it is more or less uh, about the larger uh, cities in Slovakia and some examples from uh, from Europe, from the, from the other countries. So, um, well, I will start perhaps that, that cities are great for the economy. All the developed countries that typically they have big cities and there is no developed country uh, with just rural population. So cities are great for, for, for the economy, but on the other hand, uh, uh, cities are typical for uh, density of people and firms and that's not good for uh, health and if we take a look on the history there were many uh, different epidemic uh, which uh, uh, had a terrible um, impact on, on the on the cities but luckily all all the time all the these uh, shocks uh, resulted in innovations in urban planning and uh, we can name some of the some of the few like uh, cholera uh, and tuberculosis, and all of them resulted in, in innovation in architecture, in uh, sanitation for cholera or for 
um, some new standards for, for uh, fresh air and sunshine in, in architecture uh, uh, in the time of tuberculosis. So hopefully all this um, uh, epidemic, uh, which is currently uh, at place, will, will result in innovation, which will move uh, to higher levels of development. Well, I will at, at the beginning uh, show some examples uh, from Slovakia, from the uh, eight largest cities, and uh, the way they coped with the uh, with the health situation. I have to first um, uh, perhaps highlight that uh, cities were really rapid with the actions, and I think that uh, even even quicker than the national government in in some uh, in some way. Uh, and they focus in, on different uh, areas. Uh, first of all, they, they made an information campaign, and you perhaps will see on, on, the, on the next slide that, uh, for example, uh, uh, the campaign in Bratislava, uh, which really um, informed uh, local citizens how to uh, practice social distancing, and all the measures during the crisis were mostly directed to to slow down the spread of the uh, of the virus uh, uh, and flatten the curve um, on the next slide uh, well one of the first uh, intervention was uh, in the public transportation uh, well because uh, it was discussed that the infection is uh, spread by uh, public transportation actually one of the first cases was uh, the driver of, of the tram in Bratislava, so so the, one of the first measures was to secure the public transportation. Um, 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 it was an obligation to wear a face ma mask uh, in public transportation. They may, and I, I'm showing you some pictures. Uh, they they separated bus driver from the from the others and and disinfect the uh, uh, the buses. Uh, some of the some of the cities they decided to uh, stop uh, provision of the service uh, and provide or providing uh, free parking or public transportation for free like it was in Trenchin. Um, all the time uh, um, there are specific groups in cities which are uh, kind of vulnerable in these situations. Usually elderly people or homeless. And uh, cities make a big efforts to 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 help them to cope with the situation. They opened uh, hotlinks uh, uh, for uh, some consultation. Um, as a lot of the public services moved to the to the digital uh, way of uh, of uh, providing these services, and these groups are, have difficulties with uh, with this new technology, so uh, so they try to uh, help them help them with this with it. Um, Especially for homeless people, as this is a, a highly risky uh, social group, they constructed uh, a current city in, in Bratislava. Um, we have seen some uh, technological innovation as well, and I'm showing you some some examples. This is from the next on the next slide from Bratislava, uh, sorry, Banska Bystrica, where they established the GIS-based uh, uh, map uh, service, which uh, provided information about operating hours and, and availability of public services. And uh, in Zilina, uh, there was a, they established a web page, uh, which was uh, um, trying to connect uh, volunteers with those in need. Uh, uh, they provided information about the uh, Develier of uh, face max and uh, and um, they also developed a special specialized app with uh, information about uh, the restaurants which provide delivery of food, uh, for example. Um, well, um, one of the um, sectors which uh, was kind of most uh, affected uh, in in the in the city was uh, cultural sector. As uh, all the events were cancelled, uh, so city organized uh, in the cooperation with the with the theaters and and uh, artists uh, some live streaming of uh, of uh, theater theater performance on or um, musical shows uh, and, uh, and and I have slides with uh, showing you some some pictures about uh, those live performance uh, from Trenčín or or uh, Nitra or. Uh, well, now I will move to uh, the impact on the municipalities. Uh, uh, may I ask you to move forward to, I think, two slides more. 
uh, I well as as my as my uh, as a previous speaker said uh, municipalities uh, a large part of the the budget uh, is uh, uh, coming from the revenues uh, from the income taxes and 38 percent and it was already announced that uh, that um, approximately eight uh, percent the, the the revenues will be lower by eight percent um well that's quite sharp decline it, it is a little more or less uh, it was a little bit more or less uh, same during the financial crisis in the in 2008 and I, i'm showing the graph uh, how the evolution of that uh, uh, of the incomes of the uh, from income tax uh, uh, was taking place during that period, and it took al almost uh, uh, five years to to reach the uh, situation as it was in two thousand and eight. So it's not a short time; it may may last uh, longer. Um, well, there will be there will be another. Uh, it, mm, decline in incomes um, which is not that discussed at the moment but uh, especially the tourist regions they have a large share of uh, incomes from the uh, local tax on accommodation and, and i'm showing you the map uh, where the there are the cities with the largest share of uh, incomes uh, from this tax especially in the northern part in the tourist region but also the the spa cities um, uh, will be in trouble uh, in this perspective um, on the next slide, we already have some first data from uh, from the uh, development of unemployment rate, and you may see on the left uh, on the left map that uh, um, the worst situation will be in the least developed uh, regions. Uh, uh, urban regions and large cities are usually doing a little bit better. Um, the growth of unemployment level was uh, already announced. Uh, between between April and March, it, it increased by 1.38 percentage points, uh, and uh, luckily for the urban regions, it was a little bit lower. Uh, but as I said, the uh, the rest of Slovakia, the the uh, the growth of unemployment level was a little bit uh, larger. Um, well, that, then, uh, what kind of response we can expect on the next next slide? Uh, I made a short survey in the, the already very good web page showing the initiatives on the individual cities, how they cope with the uh, with the crisis. Uh, uh, so after the health crisis, now there is uh, there are initiatives uh, trying to uh, uh, respond and uh, and uh, recover the the local economies. Well, first of all, I, I have to stress that that. Uh, um, many of them they use a strategic approach, so these are not random uh, initiatives, but they are, they uh, they set up some priorities, they allocated funds, they uh, invited uh, the key stakeholders and citizens to discuss with them uh, the way how to deliver the uh, the help. Um, well, cities are important players in the in the uh, supporting. Uh, economic situation uh, at these days it is a little bit different uh, compared to the economic crisis in in 2008 because at that time it was uh, mostly based on the uh the decline of of uh, uh global demand now also the local demand uh, will is, is declining and and especially short, small and medium-sized enterprises are very vulnerable in this case so um so first uh, group of, uh, of interventions are, are focused on local businesses. Well, um, 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 they, they face the loss of uh, demand and incomes, and, and uh, um, we can also say that trust uh, for, for the um, and safety for, for the services for the citizens. So uh, I'm showing you some examples from, uh, let's say, Nice that, that uh, they invite uh, invented. Uh, uh, some kind of a, a confidence label or health confidence label to make sure that uh, the customers that the restaurants is safe uh, from this perspective. Uh, many many uh, cities uh, um, allow the local the local restaurants to extend terraces uh, towards the streets because there are still um, uh, strict uh, rules about the uh, distance uh, in these services. Uh, you may have heard about uh, uh, about uh, Vienna, and they uh, 
and they publish the uh, vouchers for the local families uh, and they can spend this uh, in restaurants and, uh, and, and cafes. Of course, the, the cities can offer tax reliefs and, and uh, rent reliefs and, uh, and uh, similar uh, instruments. Um, well, the second, again, the vulnerable groups, uh, uh, as I said, they don't have uh, usually skills to use new technologies uh, and digital services. And a lot of the public services, they move to digital and but also private ones. So, so uh, cities are targeting to provide these uh, uh, people with uh, digital devices, uh, let's say uh, in Cardiff, they they, uh, they distributed 5,000 of, of digital devices and uh, for kids, or in Poznan, they, they um, uh, provided some consultation and support uh, for the seniors for using these services. Uh, but we can also see that the, uh, there were uh, attempts to um, uh, do some crowdfunding uh, to help financially uh, the people in need, uh, and they use again technological solutions uh, here. Um, culture, as I said, is uh, well. Culture is a vital part of the uh, urban economy. Uh, usually, the larger the city is, the more, more important the culture and creative industries are. And uh, um, as all the events were cancelled, so the culture sector is really in troubles, and and they lost a lot of uh, incomes. So most of the cities uh, decided to increase budget for culture, for cultural uh, uh, events and for cultural in in general. So they compensate uh, local artists and they they uh, provide them with some also rent reliefs uh, for cultural organizations, or they also. Uh, Establish some specialized uh, projects about uh, the current situation uh, and uh, suggested cult, uh, artists to, to, to make some artistic uh, performance, performance about this situation. And uh, perhaps last but not least uh, is transportation again. Um, um, cities during the crisis, a uh, lot of people, I, I think there was uh, already announced that in Bratislava there was a decline by 80% of, of the number of, of ridership. And uh, um, a lot of people uh, turned into individual transportation and uh, some cities uh, established and built new temporary bike lanes like it was in Budapest, uh, 10 kilometers. Um, and also, uh, as I said already, uh, they in implemented some, some in measures to, to increase the social distance in the public transportation. Well, in general, in public transportation, cities have to avoid uh, the peak hours where there are a lot of uh, people uh, meeting. Um, and uh, um, I think that, that uh, nowadays this is kind of a strategic also uh, uh, or importance that, that uh, cities uh, can use the situation to uh, increase services for individual transportation, like uh, for uh, bikers and those who walk. So all these measures I, 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 I introduced were more or less short term still, um, and uh, there will be perhaps even uh, other measures in 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 the long run, uh, which will be directed uh, in urban planning and the way the city is organized and and uh, transportation uh, as well. So so this was uh, from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh... Mr. Mr. Rehak, uh, that was uh, again, as I mentioned, presentation from Mr. Rehak, who is not only associate professor and chair of the Department of the Public Administration and Regional Development at the University of Economics in Bratislava, but also president of the Slovak section of the European Science Association. If I may, one follow-up question, Mr. Rehak, because I understand you uh, will not be able to join us for the rest of the panel. In your experience and for our viewers, what, what shape of recovery in the negative economic impact would you, would you expect based on experience for, from, from 2008 to 2009? Uh, mm -hmm. It means mm -hmm. after the hit this year, what's your expectation for the budgets of the cities and municipalities for, let's say, subsequent mm -hmm. couple of years? And when, do you, when would you expect the situation to come up that I ask because I, I would assume that's part of the information that might be useful for the cities when planning what kind of uh, 
timeline they need to adopt when setting priorities and deciding on the inevitable cuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. I, I wish I would have uh, an answer for that. Uh, uh, we can only uh, kind of discuss uh, uh, about the future. Well, uh, as I said, the difference between the 2008 uh, crisis and, and current crisis is now there is a combination of, of the global economic crisis, or it is uh, expected to be, and the local crisis, which uh, comes from the decline of local demand. Uh, so for the uh, so that's why I, I, I kind of uh, highlighted the role of, uh, of cities, because uh, they can support really the local economy with the interventions. Well, about time. Well, as I showed you on the, on, on the, on, on the graphs, uh, in 2008, it, it took like uh, four years to, to come back to some kind of normal situation again. Um, um, we can only guess uh, if it will be longer or, or, or uh, shorter. Um, well, perhaps uh, I can only 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 say that uh, we hope that it will be shorter. I'm not so optimistic in this uh, in this sense. We don't know about the, how the global economy will react. Uh, um, I'm really a little bit more optimistic about the local situations, but Slovak economy is a small and open economy and, and is really strongly connected to the global uh, economic situation. So, so um, this is my actually perspective on that. Thank you very much. I, I understand that you uh, need to leave, but still one more last question. Would it be fair to say, given this malaise and a really difficult situation we go through, that actually because of the shape of the hit to the employment, the bigger the city, the less significant the financial impact, or is that not really fair to say because on the other side, the smaller municipalities have lower costs mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that's a good question again um, well i think that there are different perspective how to answer this question first it's not not only about the size it's almost also about the economic structure of that city because some of the sectors will be uh, more vulnerable uh, li like i said the tourist uh, regions and we don't know about um, the upcoming uh, summer holidays and and uh, another other uh, tourist seasons. Uh, uh, so I think that this is one of the uh, problem that uh, there is no kind of general answer for that question. So it will be individual. If the city, I mean, the larger city, usually there are more uh, or the uh, economy is more depending, dependent on the global situation like Bratislava and the large cities, they have large factories. So the impact on those uh, cities will be more related to the uh, global economic crisis. Uh, also tourist regions, but there is a combination of, of uh, domestic visitors and visitors from outside. So if the people will stay uh, in Slovakia and spend the holidays in Slovakia, perhaps the decline will be not the chart. But it was already announced that uh, it, uh, 66 uh, uh, percentage decline of tourism in March in Slovakia. So that's quite huge. So, so uh, it's not only size, it's the economic structure as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rehak. Uh, thank you uh, again. Unfortunately, we need to part ways at this point. So this was uh, Associate Professor Stefan Rehak from Economics University in Bratislava and President of the Slovak Section of the European Regional Science Association. Thank you very much. By which I would like to turn to other members of our panels after this uh, very insightful two presentations and i would like to start with the first deputy of the mayor of kosice the second biggest slovak city uh, mr marcel giboda uh, with very straightforward question mr giboda what's burning you in terms of the economics of the city most at the moment because of the COVID? Um. It's a really interesting topic. I hope that you can hear me. Uh, it's a really interesting yes, topic because that's, it's, uh, it has two layers. One is the economy of the whole city as a, as a whole economic entity. And the second one is the economics of the municipality, which is city of Kosice. And we have also city parts 22 of, uh, which is more than in Bratislava. But uh, the, the impact of the, economic crisis uh, and that will come after COVID uh, is connected also to issues that we had to face uh, last year 
we had to um, adjust to economic realities that were coming from different measures uh, which were passed through our par national parliament or through our national government. And we've had to adjust for, let's say, 20 million euros loss in our budget last year. So we did the natural thing that is only one what, what is at hand for a city, and this is the increase of the local taxes, which we done last year, to not cut any services, to not cut the public transport, uh, and just to keep upkeep the, the services that we have. Now the economic crisis and the um, projections that we are receiving are saying that in the, let's say, worst case scenario, according to National Bank, we can lose 40 million euros, which is 20% of our budget. Uh, to be honest, this budget is over 20, 220 million, out of which 100 million is just for schools, which are getting from the government, and the rest is our budget. And if we would lose 20 million or 40 million, it would be devastating on the, on the infrastructure of the city. We would have to close many uh, established public companies that uh, run different cultural projects or a city projects and this would be devastating for the city because i met mr kashitsky at uh, our visit in uh, in oslo when we visited there uh, on a, a one meeting due to one project uh, that was opened or, or called for for slovak municipalities and then we learn what the most um, or the biggest difference between Slovak municipalities and uh, other municipalities in Western Europe. So I uh, agree with Mr. Uh, uh, with, with the colleague from the university when he's saying that this is also a potential for for changes in the in the how we look on the municipalities in Slovakia, and this is something that has to come from the national level. Uh, where uh, the government and the responsibles have to acknowledge that uh, the number of municipalities that we have and the, uh, uh, the way how we finance it is not uh, sustainable enough. Because when we were sp speaking about the possibilities how municipalities could be the new motor for the development in the lo on the local level, uh, we are lacking the connection to the financing or, the, or, or to the success of the local uh, companies. Uh, apart from the municipalities in Germany, in Czech Republic or in Austria, municipalities in Slovakia are not getting a part of the tax income from the companies that are uh, in the cities. So we don't have like direct way how to influence it. Also we are missing many public uh, possible, let's say, um, subventions or possibilities for subventions for, for new companies. Uh, we've met with a, with a new possible investor in Košice and he was, uh, because as I mentioned, we had to increase the land tax or, or the property tax and he was a bit appalled by the, by the tax and he asked if we can give him for like say for, for two years or something when he would be building his, uh, his production facility, some, some, um, some like tax um, to lose this the tax for these two years. And the problem was that we don't have this ability. So the city is lacking in our uh, legislative um, reality, is lacking the, the, the proper, uh, proper tools to be more uh, active in this area. And I think that this is the biggest, um, the biggest possibility, what we can learn and how we can change this, uh, this in our country and how we can push for the more uh, active cities and also to push the, the, the reform of the public sector in this area of local uh, municipalities to be more uh, effective, to be more uh, not only effective but also to be more um, knowledgeable because we have many municipalities and uh, I have it from my own um, uh, experience that on this lower level, the mayors and, and their workers, they cannot concentrate, they cannot uh, get to this level where they can understand many projects and many uh, tasks that are before them. 
one part of how we uh, are taking this crisis uh, is we uh, established a fund for 3 million euros. So this was the first step that we made for hygiene um, um, necessary uh, steps and also social steps. Then we um, started to, um, to, uh, to think where we can cut uh, the, the already this year budget. The problem is, as I said, if we'll be, it will be in the, in the 20 millions or 40 million euros, it's not sustainable for us only, for the city. And then we also established that we don't want to cut in the areas of uh, projects planning and future uh, development of the city. So no cuts to the European projects, and no cuts to the, let's say, we are uh, working on a new city plan. We are now starting to work on the new plan for, uh, um, for, the, for, um, for the development of the city. And this is the area where uh, we can um, attach ourselves on this new, um, like, uh, new, new problems that we have to face in this area. One of them, it was mentioned, is about public transport. I was right uh, hour ago. I was uh, con making a concept for an answer for a, for a news media that what's what's what was the uh, what was the changes during the COVID. And one is that the public transport was problematic. We've had to uh, get the new hygiene standards. It, uh, as in Bratislava, it meant a big loss in uh, people that we transport. Uh, until end of the year, the public transport company will lose more than 9 million euros, which is a big problem because if they lose 9 million euros, they will come to the city to ask for that. And uh, also, we there, there was a push towards uh, the um, uh, transport with a personal car. So we, st uh, as other cities, we stopped um, um, getting the um, the parking uh, um, parking fees. And th this will now change from the first of uh, June. But nevertheless, uh, these these are the these are the things that we had to face uh, regarding this crisis. And until now, which is which is also funny that uh, the state is helping other companies, but publicly owned companies, as it's the public transport company of Kosice and Bratislava, um, to name the few, uh, are not el eligible to to this help. So so they are, they cannot ask for the for the for this help, which is which is a big problem for us because I said. They are missing when they will miss these 9 million euros until the end of the year. We will be in big troubles. We were in last year, we stayed it, and we, the city already is paying more than 23 million euros to the, to the public transport company, which is more than 30% of its running cost, not investitions, which will be uh, on, the, on the burden of the city, nevertheless. In shortcuts, this, this is maybe the few hurdles or, or possibilities that we are facing as the not only as the city but as a whole country thank you very much mr Gibora, for this thorough overview of the challenges that you are facing uh, thanks god you have God, you have this long over 10 years experience in the municipality. Uh, before we go into discussing some of the topics that you suggested, including the depth of the know-how on the municipal level, the size of and number of municipalities, as well as the direct impact of the current uh, situation on the this year and the next year finances, I would like to turn uh, and give the floor to our distinguished uh, foreign uh, guests. Uh, first of all, Mr. Radim Sershen, who, apart from being the president of the European Leader Association for Rural Development and deputy chairman of the STAN, the political party, mayors and independents, uh, he's also the mayor of the village uh, Dolni Studenka, if I may say so, in Šumpersko. So, Mr. Sershen, very straightforward question. It's up to you how you choose to answer it briefly. What's burning you most at the moment as, as a mayor due to COVID? 
So good morning to everybody. Thanks a lot for uh, inviting me to this interesting conference. Um, I will speak on behalf of my municipality and also on behalf of 2,000 municipalities unified in the Association of Local Governments of the Czech Republic, where I am acting as a vice chairman. And today, actually, we are having a strike because uh, we are hanging a black flag in our municipalities because of the uh, proposed cuts, not just from the tax revenues, but from so-called compensation bonus, which should go to the small businesses, which we support very much, but the government took it from our budget. So um, what is uh, very complicated in this period is a high level of uncertainty because uh, we do not know what will be our budget at the end. Because first, uh, <clears throat> suppose, uh, first uh, uh, predictions were that there will be 11 to 15 percent cut. Now we think it's mo more or less about 20 percent cut. And of course, it's very uh, difficult to um, uh, go on with all the investments. Uh, of course, the same as the Slov Slovakian colleagues, uh, we are using a lot of European funds. So uh, we need, uh, of course, first of all, money for co-financing, even in my municipalities which is 1,400 uh, population. We are now having uh, investments uh, from European funds, uh, uh, like uh, cost uh, 6 million euros, it's, which is quite a big amount of money with regard to our budget. So it's uh, very difficult. And um, what, but what we believe, on the other hand, is that if we want to overcome this crisis, you know, uh, which is now becoming to be more economic crisis than the health crisis, we need to invest. The municipalities are the players uh, which should invest. And uh, it's not the way that the government supports the local small businesses, giving them 1,000 euro to stay at home, you know. It's not the way. We should support them through giving them work, through the uh, procurement, through making the investments in, the, in our local governments. Uh, because uh, even <clears throat> the investments going from the local governments are spread all over the country. They are supporting especially the smallest businesses, which are the most vulnerable. Because if just government invests into the high highways and, and, and those investments, you know, it's not going all, all around the area. So this is the point which is the Association of Local Governments is trying to push, is that if we want to uh, uh, be, uh, help the best to the local economy, is to invest from, from on behalf of the local governments. Of course, in our budgets, there are two parts. One of them is uh, the part which is going from tax revenues, which will probably go down, and uh, but it shouldn't go down that much so that we can survive, you know, to, to, to work. I am sure, and uh, I am also a member of the Committee of the Regions and European Committee of the Regions, and I am vice chairman of the Commission for Natural Resources and Rural Development. And uh, uh, speaking to my colleagues all around, the Europe, uh, I think that the existence of so many municipalities, it's a, we call it family gold, that you know, that um, the outcomes of those municipalities are, uh, and the, the level of the local democracy is uh, really amazing. And it doesn't cost so much, it's about in the Czech Republic 100 million euros per year is the existence of all 6,250 municipalities. So it's not that much money once we are all, all the time speaking about uh, effectivity. So, um, sorry. So um, we need to find a model how to bring the money from the government to the bottom and to decide on the local level. And I really very much appreciate the bottom-up approaches. I very much believe in the territorial instruments like ITI or CLLD, community-led local development. It was leader before. And I, I spent a lot of my life in uh, in uh, uh, spreading leader, not just in within the European Union, but also but also in Georgia, Armenia, and Balkan. So I really believe that it works very much if the investments are done bottom up, with uh, with uh, the strategies are negotiated bottom up, and we need now to reallocate uh, resources. You know, now in the Czech Republic, the government is printing money, you know, because uh, it uh, wants to invest. Uh, our debt is not so high, so we can afford it. And um, uh, our motivation is so that as much money as possible goes to the local governments to support the local projects. And also there is uh, still about uh, one to two billion euros spent uh, left in the uh, ESIF funds for this programming period, which should be spent. So now we are also working on the reallocation of the European funds for this programming period, which should be spent or reallocated in this year 
to give more money to the local governments because there was there was a, a, a big amount of projects which couldn't be supported, which are prepared for uh, investment immediately, but they were not supported. So it's just very easy to support them because all the staff, all the administration was done. So this is the way what we are trying to persuade the government to reallocate the money to the prepared projects. We also made a kind of uh, research among our municipalities to find out what are the projects which are uh, prepared for, for immediate, uh, uh, immediate uh, realization. And what is also very important to, to use this crisis for is, uh, I know that Green Deal is uh, it's not a nice word in the East European countries, but I very much believe in that because we need to deal with that. We need to deal with smart villages, smart cities, smart regions. This is also an area which I am uh, engaged very much within the European level and also uh, on the level of OECD. So I think we need to use this opportunity to, to stimulate this new thinking about the investments. And uh, uh, what is uh, a big problem now, that uh, it's a very dry season already, or dry years for last years. So we need to retain the water in the countryside. We need to think about the uh, energy efficiency. We need to think about the community sources of, uh, of energy, uh, renewable energy. So I think this is also a good opportunity to stimulate it through the, through the funding, uh, through the European funds and also some other funds. So I think, of course, there is a crisis, uh, but I think we should also find a positive sign on that and uh, to find the challenges for us. And what I, I must say, I was uh, not, because I am, uh, we have two kinds of mayors in the Czech Republic, full-time mayors and non-full-time mayors. So I'm more engaged in work on the uh, European field. I'm teaching in university and working. So I'm not full-time mayor, but now I spend so much time, the most time in my municipality, probably in my life. But you know, what's very nice to see how the people are really uh, doing a voluntary work, helping to each other. So I think this is also a very important motivation of this period, of this crisis, to, uh, to use it for the future. And uh, so this is actually the basic, uh, basic uh, overview from the situation in the Czech Republic, but uh, especially thanks to the so many mayors, so many municipalities and the regions we have in the Czech Republic, the situation was uh, overcome quite well, but uh, you know, it was uh, like in partisan war because you know, we did not have, of course, um, uh, resources, we did not have masks and all the stuff, respirators, so we had to go on how, how, uh, how like uh, improvise, and I think we succeeded very well, also thanks to the existence of so many local governments and uh, regional governments in the Czech Republic. Thank you very much. That was Mr. Radim Sershen, President of the European Leader Association for Rural Development. Uh, thank you for mentioning the topic of the smart cities, by which we, I would like to give floor to our distinguished uh, British guest, Paul Murby, OBE, Fellow of the Royal Society of Arts. Mr. Murby, welcome to our panel. We did a uh, inter brief introduction of your uh, curriculum. As you are serving as the chairman of the Swindon and Wiltshire Local Enterprise Partnership, which is overseeing over 140 million of government local infrastructure investment spending, uh, I'd like to give floor to you to, for your introductory words uh, with very straightforward question, what's burning municipalities across the channel most because of the COVID? <clears throat> Thank you, uh, great question. Um, I was talking to some uh, rural farmers uh, and they said simply, we cannot furlough cows. We cannot say to cows, stop producing milk, uh, stop eating the feed. Um, and, and that made me think very much um, the, the burning issue for us. The, um, we have a city near uh, my office here who last year noted that as a smart city, they only have three days food supply. Um, and the problem for us in the first week of the emergency was that people stopped eating 50% of their food away from the home. They stopped visiting restaurants. They stopped having sandwiches at work. So we saw what was called panic buying by our smart citizens, but they were actually just going back to what was um, buying patterns of food in, uh, say, the 1980s, the 1990s. The first phase of that was to get those people stocked up with food, and uh, the UK government worked very hard 
to make sure that our supply channels were intact, that our food channels were intact. And then the next phase was really to get people to stay safe. Um, so our municipalities were very grateful for the government paying the uh, wages of our workers. And talking in, uh, uh, in my company, two thirds of my team asked to stay at home and do no work. And they were very, very frightened. So the burning issue for us now um, is to go into a confidence restoring phase, to go into a recovery phase and persuade people to come out and start spending again. Um, but I think that we've had a taste now of what modern life could really be. Cleaner air, cleaner water, um, less congestion on the roads. And I think um, there is a huge challenge for us in the smart cities arena now to deliver that for the longer term. Um, lots of work going on. My keynote would be we need to restore confidence. That's what's happening over here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Morby, uh, for your introductory word. Before I turn back to our uh, Slovak guests, uh, going back to the fir deput first deputy mayor of the city of uh, Kostce, one follow-up question, if I may, Mr. Morby. Uh, mm. A lot that is being discussed is that this crisis will accelerate some of the trends that we have seen uh, before, especially when it comes to smart cities and digitalization. In your opinion, which of the technological trends, which were anywhere ongoing, will just need to jumpstart uh, in, the, in the cities or municipalities to, to, reap the, to best reap the benefits of the digitalization? I think uh, the very first thing we have to look at is how people travel. So clearly we have people sitting in uh, cities and in uh, towns who can walk to work. But if anywhere in the world, whether it be India, the Philippines, or in, in rural Wiltshire here in England, people have to drive to get to their offices. They, they don't, they're not doing that at the minute. And I think that that has uh, a challenge for all of us. We've shown that we don't necessarily need to pollute our air with lots of car journeys. But equally, people are not going to get onto trams and trains if they feel that they will, their personal safety is at risk as a result. So if there was one thing we had to work on right now, it would be connectivity um, and making sure that the internet can um, cope with the demand of capacity. And it's very interesting, if you look at Netflix, who reduce their video quality voluntarily. There is a role perhaps for the towns and cities to order people to use the internet less. And that of course takes us into a whole new arena of net neutrality. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your insightful words. Before I give word to uh, Deputy Mayor of City of Kostce, Mr. Giboda, I would like to ask Ambassador Kashitsky. Ambassador Kashitsky, uh, just following upon what uh, Mr. Morby has said, uh, you've served as uh, ambassador of Slovakia to NATO in Brussels uh, just during the previous crisis, 2008-2009, and subsequently during the Eurozone debt crisis, you served in Oslo as the ambassador of Slovakia to Norway. We uh, heard your uh, presentation about the use of available uh, funds of the European economic uh, area for the municipalities from from your uh, earlier experience abroad uh, could you could you just comment briefly where do you think that the slovak municipalities are uh, maybe lagging behind in terms of response to the crisis based on your experience uh, both from the brussels and and oslo you know, I have several remarks regarding uh, what, uh, for example, uh, Mr. Stefan Rehak said or Marcel Giboda, regarding what Marcel Giboda said, uh, for example, city of uh, Košice, uh, they made a lot of very successful projects uh, with connection with the EA Norway uh, grants, uh, and uh, we are looking for very good cooperation also in the future. But he mentioned one thing um, regarding this uh, 
cities uh, mm -hmm. and um, uh, municipalities. And this mm -hmm. is, uh, and also Mr. Radim Sršen, uh, uh, he touched this, uh, this problem. And this is co financing of uh, projects regarding EA grants, Norway grants, Swiss financial mechanism, or uh, European funds. This is very important because, uh, from my point of, uh, point of view, more easy way is to have grants, which means 100% uh, of financing. Because if you have co financing, for some uh, cities, it's not a problem. But for part of cities or uh, small towns, uh, they can create a lot of uh, problems. And usually, if you are using uh, funds, you need to have some kind of uh, co-financing. Uh, Mr. Stefan Rehak touched um, this area of uh, European funds only for information that uh, regarding uh, European structural and investment uh, funds. Uh, free resources uh, will move, for example, in Slovakia, in area of employment rotation. It will be approximately uh, 100, um, 507 million euros. Also, support of small and medium-sized enterprises, like uh, Mr. Radim Sršen said. Uh, plan in Slovakia is used uh, approximately 330 million of euros uh, from the EU funds. And also, the uh, healthcare system is also one of area when uh, we have planned to use uh, approximately 250,000 uh, million uh, uh, euros. Uh, and also what uh, <coughs> uh, Mr. Paul Hobby said, that uh, regarding these um, uh, smart cities and uh, innovation and, and etc., from my point of view, uh, this pandemic uh, raised um, the value of being uh, digital even higher. And uh, we can say that uh, uh, Corona crisis uh, changed the uh, way of doing uh, uh, business. Uh, it, it will not be uh, business as usual, as we use this expression in NATO, in NATO uh, before, uh, because uh, as I mentioned, uh, this electronic decision uh, uh, making took a huge step uh, forward, and uh, also uh, we have had some kind of problem in municipalities uh, with uh, they could not even meet and take decision, and uh, decision was to use this uh, electronic uh, form. Uh, at the end, one thing regarding this uh, uh, smart city uh, uh, cities, um, we have very good cooperation, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, with uh, uh, Slovak Smart Cities Club. And for example, together with, uh, with uh, Sweden, uh, Danish, uh, Norway, we have very good cooperation in a very unique project, and this project uh, called uh, uh, Summer uh, Smart City Summer uh, School. Um, uh, almost 15 years we are doing uh, this, not directly Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but this uh, Slovak Smart Cities uh, Club, and this is a unique uh, place for sharing knowledge, experience, and uh, information from uh, uh, cities from the overseas to our uh, municipalities, how can uh, um, uh, do it uh, in a proper way uh, with these uh, difficult times, uh, but also with this uh, corona crisis and uh, sharing information and knowledge regarding, especially with this uh, smart uh, solutions uh, uh, in the cities. Thank you very much, Ambassador Kas Kasicki. Thank you very much for your insightful uh, words uh, regarding the impact of the current situation on uh, the municipalities. So we have uh, both influence of the COVID on the big cities and the rural areas, and we have nicely represented uh, uh, speakers on this panel. Uh, Mr. Giboda, 
the first mayor of the city of Korshitsa. I would like to draw upon what uh, Paul Murby, OB, has mentioned. One of the topics that's also uh, overlapping, uh, the general uh, overlapping topic is that COVID will change the world for good in some ways. And one of those topics, which is also concerning very directly, as you mentioned, also financially, the big cities such as the Bratislava or Banska Bystrica and uh, Kosice is the way how people uh, use transport, public transport, individual transport, uh, future of the telecommuting. Uh, what's your view on what impact of the current change so that, that you have already mentioned, that was the, uh, the drop in revenues of the public transport during the quarantine, will be only temporary, in your opinion, and what impact will be permanent here to, to, to stay, and how, how do you envision the cities like Kosice responding to not only this, but also other aspects of, of this COVID on the uh, financing of the municipalities, uh, also, if you wish, you could touch also the other aspects of the digital smart smart cities. Mr. Giboda, floor is yours. Thank you. As it was mentioned, um, the current situation changed the way how the business is doing their business. It changed the way that um, the personal meetings had to be um, changed to virtual meetings. And also, this is affecting the public transport to the work and from the work. But I don't think that this will be um, upheld for, for every business because many businesses are uh, dependent on the people present in their, in their production. And uh, for that, we have to um, apply different measures. And as it's, it's showcased by the um, cities and um, uh, countries in uh, Asia, it's possible. It's nobody is asking if you have to use or uh, if you are ill yourself to use uh, the, um, the cover for, for your mouth uh, when you are entering the public transport. The, also the hygiene in these public transport uh, vehicles in, in Asia is much higher. So this is where the cities and also the private companies have to step, uh, step up and to, to implement more uh, robust measures to be able to, to say to the customer that yes, the public transport is safe enough for you to, to use it in, also in these times of crisis. And I think that our um, people are really um, acknowledgeable and they can uh, live with measures in times of crisis, but it's also necessary to, to keep up these, uh, these measures um, in place uh, also in times when we are not expecting it. And this could help us prevent the crisis also in a uh, foreseeable future or for the coming back of the COVID-19. And uh, we were very fortunate enough in Kosice uh, that we didn't have any um, deadly cases and uh, only a lower number of cases, uh, more less than 20 in the city itself. So uh, we are also, we are investing around 400,000 euros uh, per month into the, into the public transport company for this hygiene purpose uh, measures. Regarding the future, what will come, as I mentioned, we have to draw on examples from the countries in our cities in Asia. And also we have to implement uh, better public transport uh, possibilities. Uh, it's not about getting uh, people the public transport for free in my view, or I think we lost Mr. Uh, Giboda, unfortunately. Ah, uh, there seems to be a little technical glitch. Nevertheless, Mr. Sershen, uh, Paul Morby already mentioned the inevitable impact of the current crisis on in in the rural uh, rural communities. Uh, also, I would like to follow up upon what uh, Mr. Kashit, Ambassador Kashitsky has has mentioned. Yeah, right. Mr. Giboda is back. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Was... We. So yeah, some glitch in the, in the tech, tech, you see the technology is not always perfect. So, so just to conclude on it, um, it's also important, and we saw it uh, to connect also it uh, the public public transport with other uh, transport possibilities. 
In Kosice, we are big on uh, times one private company that's running the system. Again, I'm afraid we run into a small pub, uh, technical glitch. Nevertheless, Mr. Sershen, very short, straightforward question. How will the way how companies change bus uh, the way they do business due to the COVID influence the rural, rural municipalities, which you, which you know best and which you, which you represent yourselves as the president of the European Association for Rural Development? Digitalization, change of the means of transport, telecommuting, uh, impact on the, on the rural businesses and tourism. We can't hear you, I'm afraid. I'm afraid we are running into another small technical glitch. We cannot hear you, Mr. Sushen. Uh, no, uh, unfortunately, the technology is against us. Just as we <laughs> run, oh. can, can, can you say something, Mr. Sushen? Uh, yeah, while we try to figure out uh, the, the technical, technical glitches that uh, came into play, uh, Mr. Morby, um, again, if you would and uh, envision which part of the of the municipal life uh, that that has also the significant consequences on the financing of the cities uh, would be the most difficult to restore. And here I ask a very straightforward question. A lot is being discussed about uh, part of the restaurants and the gastro business going out of, out of business. Uh, same for the hotels, uh, part of the tourist industry. Uh, what's your take on this? And to what extent would actually the cities, the municipalities would need to completely revamp their financing models after COVID? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, good question. Um, in my view, um, the biggest single impact uh, of the um, pandemic uh, has been on young people. Those people who have very little resources, they're at the beginning of their careers, and in our local colleges, we have apprentices that can't continue their training and therefore um, can't go out and, and move into their careers full time. <clears throat> We also have young people who uh, are saving for cars, consumerism, they're saving for their first houses. All of those plans have um, been delayed at best and, and wrecked at worst. And then, of course, if businesses are deciding that they don't need as many employees, it's usually the young people that go first. Um, so I think the cities and the towns need to be aware that human beings are all social animals. Um, quite rightly so, but young people like to get out and consume. They like to go to the restaurants. They like to go to the bars, the theatres. They like to travel internationally. Um, that are, those sectors are going to be the very last sectors that quite rightly, both national and regional governments, towns and cities will allow to, to go forward. And if we are into a situation where you go away for three days to the beautiful city of Bratislava, uh, 14 days there and 14 days back in the UK quarantine is simply not going to work. And then I think the other thing that's important is that in the UK, 80% of our economy is services. Uh, and that those services are performed by well over five and a half billion companies that are MSMEs. Now, those people um, are the people that have suffered from the lack of income. And I think that we need to be very aware that if we're not going to go into deflation and we're not going to see ghost cities and ghost towns, we need to get those people economically active as soon as we can. Thank you very much, Mr. Murby. I hope our technical issues have been resolved and I can give a floor to Mr. Radim Sershen, if you can hear me. So, Mr. Sershen, if we might again, your take on the rural municipalities after the COVID.
I cannot hear you, Mr. Sashin. Um, uh, we let our technicians continue working on uh, trying to reconnect Mr. Session. Unfortunately, we can, cannot, cannot hear you. I'm, I'm very sorry. As time is running out, we will need to speed up. Mr. Uh, Giboda, uh, something that uh, Mr. Morby has mentioned. Your take on to what extent do you expect the city of Kosice to change it's, let's say, a landscape due to COVID in terms of, for example, um, restaurant closures, um, the change in the tourist floor, uh, flows, uh, for example, the change, maybe changed patterns of the commuters. Uh, commuters also uh, uh, underestimated topic, uh, commuters switching to cars, which uh, I understand is also a big topic also in the east of Slovakia. Mr. Giboda. Thank you very much. I hope that you can hear me. Uh, yes, we hear you well. The, the one push would be, in, as I heard it on one forum regarding this topic, it would be maybe in the development of the, um, of the, of the flats building. That people would be seeking bigger flats uh, due to this uh, crisis, that uh, they will be seeking uh, to have a bigger, bigger home to, to be able to, to, to live through such possible events. Another topic would be the, um, the, um, the view how the city manages its not public transport, but the transport of the goods. This would be the big topic uh, because how we will sustain uh, deliveries, not, not in this case to the shops, but in this case to the, to the homes itself. And uh, this, this is also what we have to take in regard when we are planning for the future development of the city. And uh, also uh, the question is um, how we will manage the transport inside of the city. Uh, and as I mentioned, and I couldn't finish it, it was uh, regarding this uh, public sharing uh, capabilities which is like a bike sharing and also um, the people who are just uh, taking uh, their ways on foot. And for that, we have to provide better ways how the city is reachable and how the services are reachable for the city. And it was, it is, it, as it was mentioned by the colleague uh, from England, I presume uh, the, the services, I am also the head of the of the uh, cluster that is responsible for the uh, for the tourism in Kosice and the service sector it was the first hit in with this with this crisis many restaurants the immediate thing that they made they released their workers because it was um, unbearable for them to keep the keep the premises closed for one month and so on so this is this will be the most uh, most affected uh, thing uh, for the, for the for the cities and for the survival of the cities, and uh, I think that the services are more concentrated in bigger cities than it's uh, in rural areas because we are providing these services also to the um, um, smaller villages that are around the city, and that's also connected to the cultural uh, aspect and to the sport uh, sport premises. That's why, for example, our city is not, not cutting any, any funds to the sport sector of the young uh, pupils. And also, we are not uh, cut, cutting or, or we, uh, we change the way how we are supporting the cultural sector uh, so that we uh, not support the, the events that are not held, but to support the the the, the co not companies but the uh, the open uh, public uh, entities that are providing these services for the city because we see it as really something as a uh, as a past uh, European capital of culture uh, as a, as an aspect or, or or area that we have to provide for a sustainable uh, future development of the city. If we lose this sector. If we don't support it now in the time of crisis, we will lose potential for the for the future development. Thank you very much, Mr. Gibora. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. If we hear Mr. Radim Sershen, I would like to still give the floor to him. Mr. Sershen, can you hear me? I can hear you, and can you hear me? Excellent, excellent, Mr. Sershen, <laughs> your take your take on the impact of the current situation on the especially rural municipalities. 
very briefly as we are running out of time actually according to my opinion because i i work for my whole life i studied and abroad and worked in brussels and came back to my municipality where my mother was a mayor for 10 years to be a mayor after her so uh, i try, really try to attract young people back to the rural areas and i think this crisis can uh, show that it's possible but of course we need broadband we need good connection as you could see now it's not that good that it should be and i am very much inspired by south korea for example it's amazing that the uh, movement migration of people is now from the cities to rural areas but not just to suburban areas but to all rural areas and i think that the possibility of home offices which was uh, unbelievable before march here in the czech republic especially even at ministries etc is not working very well i have my friends who are projecting high speed railways from the cottage in the mountains you know so i think broadband connection and the change of uh, thinking about the work uh, like in finland for example 40 percent of jobs are home office jobs you know so this is possibility which uh, can be beneficial for the rural areas it means we need good uh, infrastructure we need the change of the attitudes and change of paradigm uh, and also thinking about uh, about the work and jobs and um, of course <clears throat> there is a uh, so in this uh, with this regard i think that the smart villages smart cities, smart regions concept is very valuable and we should learn from each other. I very liked the idea of smart city uh, school, uh, summer school, and we will think some, about some projects to do smart villages school and to share experience with colleagues from North, North Europe, Scotland and, and South Korea, for example. So I, I believe that this is a very good challenge and it can help to the rural areas in the future because the people see that it's, not, uh, it's possible to work. And concerning the transportation issues, I think it's another big challenge because uh, I live 250 kilometers from Prague. Uh, the state of the roads is very bad. So even the businessman going in his luxurious uh, Mercedes goes for four hours sometimes to Prague. And if he, if he sits on train in Zabrzeh, it's two hours. So a lot of people, most of the people from the region are just going to the, to the places uh, where they just change uh, the mode from the car to the train and i think it's very working very much and also in the cities now even in the regional cities like almost now we are trying to uh, start some new forms of transportation so i believe that the transportation the public transportation and i like very much the comparison with uh, asian countries uh, that uh, it's the future in a way and uh, i think we should take all those challenges together and I really believe in, in better future of the rural areas. Thank you very much, Mr. Sershen. I take the uh, privilege of making your words the last words of this discussion, because unfortunately we ran out of the time, and even though the discussion was highly interesting. And uh, at this point, I would like to thank all our viewers. Unfortunately, we are not able to take the viewer questions this time. But most of all, I would like to thank our distinguished panelists, who were Radim Sershen, the mayor of Dolny Studenka and president of the European Leader Association for Rural Development, Marcel Giboda, the first deputy of the mayor of the city of uh, Kosice, His Excellency Ambassador Franciszek Kasicki, uh, As Associate Professor Stefan Rehak, who's no longer with us. And last but not least, thank you very much for your insightful views from across the channel, Paul Murby, OBE the chairman of the chip site and the chairman of the swindon and wiltshire local enterprise partnership gentlemen thank you very much for joining us and thank you very much for your insightful views on how the COVID is influencing the economic <coughs> situation of the cities and municipalities thank you for joining me thank,